Okay, sync in now. Now, try that again. Welcome back, Dark Souls fans, to Let's Die Horribly in Dark Souls 3, where I am poisoned. Because I am poisoned. Although I will soon not be poisoned, and then I will soon be poisoned again. Because this is the poison swamp, and we are continuing along in this horrible swamp full of poison. So that's where I came from over there. Killed that monkey. And now let's just keep going, because there's more stuff found in the muck. Ah. Nothing seems after me, but I have no moss left. Oh, there's a basilisk. There are several basilisks. Which, as we found out, are actually... Oops. Are actually a threat worth respecting. Unlike my previous assessment, which was that they were not. Wait, what am I doing? Just cut you. Dead. I think part of that was that by the time I met up with basilisks in the original game... I had plenty of curse resistance, so I didn't have to worry about it so much. I really did, like, just, I don't know, I think that's what it was. I don't have much curse resistance, although, I thought I did. Stab you, actually, I'm gonna go back to Claymore. It's better for this sort of, oops, ah! Yeah! There we go. Then heal up. But yeah, I... I mean, my curse resistance is fairly high, I think. It's like 200-something? Yeah, 262, so... I guess they were just made stronger? I don't know. I find it strange, but... There you go. Basilisks are a right pain in the butt. I'm trying to remember, where did you first meet up with basilisks in one? I think it was... In the... It wasn't Blight Town, was it? No, not quite. Dark Root either. Where was it? I mean, I know you found some near Blight Town in the Great Hollow. There were definitely a lot there. But I don't remember where else they were. Is there any entrance to this keep here? Or is that the same one that I found before? I really don't like this area. I cannot tell where anything is. It's just a mass of trees. This area, honestly, it's like Darker Garden mixed with Blight Town mixed with Lost Isolith. The lava section of Lost Isolith. And I've just kind of described the three generally agreed upon worst levels of Dark Souls, or worst areas of Dark Souls 1, except maybe Darker Garden. I think that one's a bit debatable. But the other two, as far as I know, pretty agreed upon. Those are universally poorly received. People talk about Blight Town as if it was the worst thing ever, and talk about Lost Eyes as if it was the worst thing ever, and... Oh, wait, this is... Alright, so we've looped. I find it mildly amusing that I know we've looped because we're back at the same glitch that we were at before, but yeah. That was the glitch we were at before. We know it's through there, we know it's up here, we know there's a keep over there. And I went through a door that got me closer, and yet seems to have gotten me no closer. Really? Yeah, apparently. Yeah, this is where we started, and if I were to go down to the bonfire... Oh wait, I know what it is! There's actually another path, that area I went to that I opened the door in? That area's got another path. Now that I think about it. Is it Keep Ruins? Because there's another path up there, I think, by the crows, or the crow people. I think you need to take that. Anyway, on a totally unrelated note, I was thinking about what Dark Souls is. Yeah, right here. Perfect. Exactly where I want. Anyway, so... I, think what, I was thinking about Dark Souls, because a lot of people talk about difficulty and talk about... Ooh, shiny. Talk about the games as, like, no, they're supposed to be these hard things, big challenging things, big badges of honor. 
And the thing is, you also get a lot of counter arguments of, well, the game is actually not that hard. You have other games. Think about Ninja Gaiden or pretty much anything Platinum makes. Although, admittedly, I've only played the two Bayonetta games, which are apparently the easiest ones. Loads of fun, though. Awesome games. Well, one probably more so than two. I found one just more straightforward mechanically. I kind of like that. Especially the combo system. Anyway, that aside, Dark Souls 3 doesn't... Or Dark Souls in general, less so Bloodborne. Bloodborne's got a bit more of a mechanical focus, but Dark Souls doesn't really have much. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, each weapon has, you know, a couple attacks. I mean, it's got sort of two modes, and this is where Bloodborne, I think, is more mechanics focused, because Bloodborne literally has two modes, so each weapon you have has got a fair amount to it. But in Dark Souls, you basically have one attack, and that's about it. No real combos, nothing you can do where, like, I can't just go say light, light, heavy, and get something totally different than if I just did light, then light, then heavy. There's no... There's no combinations between, say, my, my offhand and main hand weapons, or other things can do, or it's like I do some button combination, then, I don't know, I start swinging around, spinning in circles or something. Then it's also, like I said, not a hard game. It's also not super, like, the PvP is sort of there, but it's kind of there as just part of the main challenge, like, intelligent PvE. There is competition support, but you can make competition out of anything, so it's not the best example. Anyway, altogether, I feel like that makes Dark Souls kind of a hard game to categorize. I gotta ember it up too, because I feel like there's gotta be something here besides what I'm seeing. Anyway, so Dark Souls, there's a lot to it that it's like, it does mechanics, but it doesn't go all the way with a lot of them. It doesn't go all the way with difficulty, it doesn't go all the way with combat, it doesn't go all the way with your... What the heck is hurting that thing? Oh, what? Whoa. I don't want to mess with those. Wow, okay. I wonder if those are the Farron Knights people were talking about. Well, the game was talking about. But anyway, one of the big things the game does do, if you think about it, is it does atmosphere. Like, you're going about just immersion in atmosphere, and everything about the game is built around keeping you immersed in in the atmosphere. Even if you're super mechanically focused and don't really care at all about the game worlds or about anything to do with story or anything, you're still having to invest in the world because ambushes are a thing. So you have to make sure you know, okay, I know what's going on. I'm not just lazily running through. I'm paying attention. And you also have to invest in yourself because mostly when you die, you lose your souls, which incidentally, I have many souls and I'm very close to leveling. I might go do that. I shall continue this discussion while leveling. So yeah, it's there's a lot of things that you can do where it doesn't really add to any sense of challenge or it doesn't really add to any for its own sake or competition for its own sake or the mechanics for its own sake. Because like I said, there's, there's stuff there, but it's not as much as there could be or as much as other games have. And now one, one might argue, well, if you try to combine all those, you get a mess. I mean, I could sort of see that Dark Souls does kind of hit the limits of its controller setup. So for definitely on a con on a pad, that would that I agree. That would kind of be a mess. There'd be a lot of stuff to put together. But at the same time, I mean, how much of a mess would it be if weapons had combos besides just swinging a weapon over and over? Essentially, they have two hit combos in a sense because every second attack is something different. But they don't, generally speaking, have more than two different swings. And you have swing and you have swing swing. Or that's basically it. There's no, like, light, heavy, light. It's just light, light's first swing, then heavy's first swing, then light's first swing. One could argue make your own combo, but if you do, I seriously recommend... I don't know if, if you haven't played any of Platinum's games, do so, because they're really good examples of what this can do. Any Most action RPGs do this. So the point more so is that, like I said, atmosphere is kind of the focus. And with atmosphere being the Welcome focus, that makes it Very well. something... Then touch the darkness within me. Take nourishment. That makes it something which means that you actually have to think in terms well, of not these parts of it that people focus on, either the difficulty or the combat or the PvP or whatever, but instead think about it in terms of its overall goal, which is atmosphere. But it's like, what other game gives you that? I mean, the only games I can think of are walking simulators. 
Welcome home, speak. Or maybe horror games Welcome like take. Slender, but those are basically walking simulators as well. Like, basically, the kind of games that generally get derided by core audiences because for a core audience, there's not much there. Because there isn't. There's nothing mechanically there. Why would you be invested? Unless you're coming in thinking, I want to be invested in this, why would you be invested in it? There's no reason to be. I totally understand that. And I mean, I don't really... If anyone's followed my channel for any length of time, you know that I have played a bit of Slender. And that was actually due to a weird technical emergency due to SV Containment Breach. No, not working. But the entire idea, the basis for Let's Die Horribly was essentially my own disengagement with those kinds of games, with horror games particularly, but also with the whole idea of walking simulators. There are some games that are more narratively focused that I've gotten into, Life is Strange being a good example, but that had a mechanic to it. Like, I'm kind of a mechanically focused person. I don't really care that much about the world. I care about stories, but I don't care about the world exactly. I don't necessarily care about what happens to the characters in the world, especially if my character can do something to them. I can tend to be kind of a monster, honestly. Like, if I did what I did in games in the real world, a lot of people are like this too. You can kind of tell who's a mechanically focused player by basically asking them what they would do in the world and why. And if a player does something basically for their benefit that harms characters in the game, Dwarf Fortress players being an excellent example, then that's someone who's really mechanically focused. Like, that's someone who doesn't think of the world in its own terms, but thinks of it in terms of what can I get out of basically exploiting this world or dealing with this world? How best can I make something work for me? Hang on a sec. But yeah, so... No, everything's on max. Why am I not getting shadows? Yay! Dark Spirit Invasion! Hi! Anyway... So yeah, the thing is, the Dark Spirit here, for instance, that's more just a matter of having an additional obstacle. Not so much a matter of having PvP duels or whatever. It's a matter of being another thing to deal with. Like, oh, something to deal with that's intelligent, that has... that's not predictable. Uh, I don't know, I kind of like it. Maybe I won't heal. But yeah, it's like, it's... Not the most predictable thing in the world, but it's there, and it's something you have to deal with, and it... Well done. Anyway. I'm gonna human up again. I wanna see if I can fight this person again. Like, I didn't heal up, because I liked them. Like, they... I, I thought they fought well. Like, I think that's gonna be kind of my rule if people invade me, is... I, I kind of get that whole thing about being... Not healing up. Mostly because it just speeds up combat. When you're in that mode. But I mean, okay, so part of it, like, that's investment! That's investment right there! Why should I care about what my character's doing? Like, really, I should just care about this other stuff, but part of it is that I know that possibly that's another human being. I don't know for sure. That might be a computer-controlled one. But I know that might be another human being. But also, it's like, I've kind of gotten invested in the world because I have to. In order to get through, I have to. Normally, I don't care about this sort of thing. Ow. Especially with, like, oops, that's... One thing I've been learning is that I want to, ow. Want to get into, wow, okay. I do not respect you. So I'm not going to be as nice to you as I was to the human player, or presumably the invader at least. I am going to kill you indiscriminately. But yeah, so that's the thing is... I'm invested in the world, I'm invested in my character. Like, I've gotten freaked out in this Let's Play so far. Absolutely freaked out, and... I mean, I was trying to mention, I put in an annotation, but... I was... I kind of mentioned... I was trying to, before getting really interrupted, that the whole Let's Die Horribly idea was essentially, let's make fun of the sort of... the sort of player and the sort of game that's built around basically jump scares, built around freaking you out, built around making you feel like... Oh, can I not backstab you? Making you feel this emotion without actually really earning it. And kind of making fun of that. Dark Souls, however, kind of earns it mechanically, but its mechanics are kind of built around earning that. That's the whole point. Or at least that's what the designer argues is the point, and I, I tend to agree. I think that it really is not designed to be an action game, or designed to be a PvP game, or designed to be a 
difficult game, a game for the sake of challenge, but instead a game designed for... Oh, actually, I already read this one. Instead, it's a game designed to be kind of all those things, but for the sake of giving you a sense of environment, giving you a sense of immersion, giving you a sense that you should care. And we're also back up to where we were. Remember this guy? Looked through the gate and I saw this Titanite Lizard. Which is going to be a bit of a pain. Could be interesting though. But yeah, so that's the thing, is that it's a game built around making you care about itself rather than a game making you just act for the sake of acting mechanically, because like I said, mechanics are not really its main suit. I mean, it's not bad. It's just not its focus. I mean, if you think about it, like I said, there's not much in the combat, there's not much in the overall game, but there is enough. Enough to get you invested. Enough to make you really consider the game as its own thing worth doing, even if you aren't invested in story and environment and character. But if you are, also give you something for that. And when you start getting invested because of the mechanics, you become more invested in everything else. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of the reason why people hate walking simulators is because they basically demand an emotional investment without really earning it. Like, they haven't done anything to make you care about the world other than tell you you should care about the world. So if you're not inclined to do that from the get-go, why would you? Instead, you'd be just wondering what you're supposed to do and then getting annoyed because there isn't much. Whereas with Dark Souls, there is much. But you're also having to invest yourself in the world because there's a lot to worry about. So it's a nice mix. Like, I, I like how that's set up, but I feel like it is really, when it comes down to it, how you make a proper walking simulator for a core gamer. For a core gamer audience. You give them enough mechanics that there's something to do, something fun to do. You give them enough investment by having those mechanics be worth investing in. In Dark Souls' case, because of challenge, but it really doesn't matter. It's just make sure this challenge is a good way of getting invested. And then from there, you just have... You have enough there that people care, and then you make a world around it. And then people go for it. And they do, and that's... That's, I think, Dark Souls' biggest trick, is that it makes you invested in the world by mechanically making it very much worth your while. And then gives you a great environment to be invested in and immersed in, gives you your character and other characters to be invested in as well, because now you've now you have a reason to be invested. They've given you something to be invested in. Which solves the problem that walking simulators tend to have, and horror games in particular tend to have, of wondering why in the world you should care at all. And now we're back here. I think that's kind of all I had to say on that subject for now. I'm kind of trying to work that out. Really, that's sort of my very first thoughts on this whole idea of... of Dark Souls as a walking simulator, or as what a walking simulator should be if it wants to actually be taken seriously. Like, with that kind of environment. It's not even... Walking simulator is not even a good... Because that's a pejorative term. The better way of thinking of it is that genre as an idea can be thought of in terms of both how the mechanics work, which Dark Souls kind of works that way, or in terms of how the game is designed for its focus. And in terms of mechanics, Dark Souls is an action RPG. There is no denying that. To say anything else is being facetious. Like, there, you can't say Dark Souls is not meant to be played as an action RPG. Because, I mean, it is a third-person game. It is hack-and-slash mechanics. That's how the game works. But... It is a game that, despite all that, if you were to think in genre in terms of focus and in terms of the mood is trying to set, the tone is trying to set, all that stuff, then Dark Souls has more in common with walking simulators than it does with your typical action RPG. Oh, seriously? I missed you? Wow. Seriously? Ow! Okay. 
Not what I intended, but... Yeah! Eat my emotional response! Yeah, I guess that's the thing, is that it's a game focused on emotional investment, and it's a game focused on immersion, and that's what it shares in common with walking simulators. That's basically what I mean. It's, it's that the conception of genre in tone terms makes it a walking simulator. The conception of genre in terms of mechanics, however, no, obviously not. But it's... Wow. Pretty easy to argue that... Wow. I want to see if I can kill you with a crossbow. I don't know why I did that. I would have been much better off killing with the claymore, but whatever. Anyhow. Yeah. That's my take on it. I just think it's interesting. Just because I think that's one of the reasons why there's a lot of debate about what it even means. Like what a Souls game even means and what it means to be that genre. Like what even what genre it even is. Ow. But that's kind of a weird semantic argument. I just think it it makes it a lot easier to think of what is it? Because if you're thinking, oh, it's a challenge game, well, you'll be disappointed because there's... Or rather, it's not quite what you're looking for. If you're thinking, as for action RPG's sake, yeah, you'll have an interesting time, but it might feel a bit long in the tooth and slow and clunky. And also, not like it's got a whole lot going for it. And if you're looking for a competitive 3D fighting game for swords, I recommend Blade Symphony. Blade Symphony's a really awesome game that I think was really underrated. It was in a Humble Bundle recently. I don't think there's a lot of players, though, sadly. But, man, is that loads of fun. If you want to play a good... It's PC only, mind you. I think. But if you want to play a good sword fighting game, like, really good, where you're actually worrying about hitting other bla people's blades with your blades, there's a lot of cool stuff like that. If you're wanting to play a game like that, check that out. Because, man, that is, a, that is a game that I'd say demonstrates what you can do with a 3D fighting game system. No. Pulling this back so I get my souls if I need to. Because I'm probably going to die. Pull you into an area where I'm not going to lose too much if I do. Whoa, okay. Rizzle straight sword, why not? I feel like that's a better option. Ah. But yeah, I think it's... I care about this enemy because this enemy I need to respect because this enemy is a pain in the butt if I don't respect it. Ow, like so. I... Failed to respect it right there, got staggered out and died. Which is why I hung back. Because I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was gonna happen. I might not beat this this episode, the Black Knight this episode, but if I don't, I will then beat it before the next episode. I was gonna run back to do this, but hey! Turns out I was in luck. I did not have to do that at all. Yeah! Oh, whoops. That was Will and Claymore. Please don't. Hmm. But yeah, like when people complain about the mechanics as far as... Oh, nice! Got a guard break! Awesome. But yeah, that's the thing. When people complain about mechanics like and challenge and such about the different iterations of the Souls series, I think the important thing is realizing that the game is much more than just... It's meant to be more than just that. It... I guess that's meant to be the backstab animation? I don't know, that's weird. Hmm. I want to fight this enemy again, because I think the Black Knight's a fun fight. It's a challenging fight, don't get me wrong. But I guess that's, that's the other thing too, is like, you know, it's... It's fun and engaging, because you... Wow! Need to care. Okay, it's five attack combo. I can heal up here. And see, this is what I mean. Like, I care because I have something to learn. I have something to gain from learning. Which is not dying. But I care about not dying because that's my progress. Like, if I die, I lose progress. So I care about my character. So I get emotionally invested. And it becomes a big deal. If I die, it becomes a big deal. I get really pissed off. I never got that reaction out of any other game. Like, out of 
any of the games that I played for the Let's Die Horribly thing because I just knew that they weren't really that important. Like, they didn't matter to me as much. Oh, wow, that was... Probably should be careful about that because that's actually kill. Ow. That staggers me out. Okay, I think I'm going to end it here and just level up because I have enough souls there to level up assuming I don't die on the way. If I do, that would be really annoying. I mean, right now I'm kind of being dispassionate because I have stuff to think about and I'm kind of trying to think about that. Get my thoughts out in order. I mean, like I said, totally first draft of this entire idea. I don't know if it's a really productive idea as far as considering the game. I just feel like it's a healthier way of considering what Dark Souls is as a game, because Dark Souls just does not work by standard action RPG logic. I mean, I'll be talking to people, because, yeah, by the time you guys watch this, I'll have just gotten back from Seattle from Northwest Majors, and I'll be probably talking to people there about it, too, because there's a lot of people in the Skullgirls community who play Dark Souls. And I want to know what their idea is on that, because... Yeah, it just seems like the the thing that makes sense is that Dark Souls is a game focused more on it it is an atmosphere game, which is much more a thing that walking simulators do than that action RPGs do or that 3D fighting games do. Or that fighting games in general. I mean I'm probably also the walking simulator thing, I don't even want to bring that up too much, partly because if you think about it, saying, Oh, it's like a walking simulator, well what's in common? Well they're three D and you move around. Well that kind of undermines my earlier point of, well, it's your genre is going off of what you're doing rather than what the game is trying to encourage you to feel or encourage you to think about. And that's what I'm saying if I'm saying it's like a walking simulator. No, it's an atmospheric game. It's folks in atmosphere. That's also true of walking simulators, but it's also true of, of a lot of games. It's true of horror games. It's true of more narratively focused games. It's just it's the atmosphere aspect. That's the thing that's important. That's the thing they're focused on. The folks in the atmosphere and immersion, they're not focused on anything else. And to try to make it focused on anything else, you just get into really silly conversations because, like I said, for pretty much any other any any other way that you could classify Dark Souls, there are other games that do that more. And Dark Souls beats them all in doing environment and immersion because that's what its focus is. But I don't feel like there's a classification for that because the only games that really fit that classification are walking simulators. But I'm repeating myself, so I will sign off and level up off camera. I hope that was an interesting thought. I hope an interesting idea. If I refine it more and have a really good idea, I might make a new video, completely independent, just about how Dark Souls is a walking simulator for the sake of controversy and titles where it's a much more condensed thing. I'd like to do that, partly because the controversial, controversial title gets views, and I'm a bit of a view whore. Not really, actually, not at all. If I was, I would not be playing the games I play. I really, like, really, if I was, why would I be playing Zero K? No one's heard of Zero K. It's an awesome game, but no one's heard of it, sadly. Great game, though. But, like, why would I play games that... I would be playing StarCraft 2. I would be playing Street Fighter 5. Like, I'd be playing all the super popular games. But I don't... Fine. Okay, I should do find StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void pretty fun. But I've gotten pretty invested in Zero K, so yeah. But anyway, the point is, is that I play the games that I find really cool, so I'm not that much... Whatever. I'm going too far. God, rambling. Sorry. So yeah, this is what I mean. I want to condense it. I want something condensed because I think it's an interesting idea, and I don't see anyone else saying things like this. But maybe someone said it for earlier Dark Souls games. Bloodborne is kind of an exception, though. I feel like the mechanics of Bloodborne were given a much greater focus. Like, you have the weapon art, the weapon switch thing, the alt mode stuff. So I don't quite count it the same. It's definitely got the environment focus, but I feel like the priority became a bit more even between pure mechanics for the sake of action game and environment for the sake of immersion, or the overall immersion factor, the atmosphere, and the sense that you and your character are one. That was a bit more in the back burner, I feel, for Bloodborne. Although, then again, I have to play the game. But <laughs> from what I could gather, it seems like the mechanics were a much greater focus. They put a lot more time into making there be more mechanical systems to work with and a deeper mechanic system just for combat. Not as much in terms of weapon breadth, but a lot more in terms of weapon depth. I like that, but like I said, that is not the focus of Dark Souls. 
no more like I think it's also kind of the point there is Bloodborne focuses more on action combat than Dark Souls does. It's far more its focus. Even that kind of points out. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I want to condense that, but I need to refine it. And maybe I'm totally off base. If I'm totally off base, then I probably won't because then it'd be a wrong idea or an idea that doesn't, doesn't offer much to the conversation. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a good night.